Yo, we try to make our images look amazing, or I am, and I kind of assume you're going to as well. That's why you're watching this video. I've made a bunch of images that look like this, and like this, and like this. So I want to help you with that. So how do we do it? The color tab in Lightroom is your best friend, and we're going to get all into it today. You ready? Let's go. My name is Andre Leroux. I'm a Brooklyn-based photographer and filmmaker. And today, I'm here to talk to you about mood. I partnered with the homies at Adobe Lightroom to make this video. I hope you find it helpful. First and foremost, do you know there's a community tab in Lightroom Mobile? All the way in the bottom right corner right here, you can tap it, you can follow people just like you do on your favorite social media apps, see photos they've made, you can get inspired, you can see before and afters that edits that people have done, you can click on them, you can play through the edits, you can start to understand, wow, how'd they do that? And this is really important because as they're working, so let's go back to that edit, we can hit this little button and like it, but more importantly, we can save their presets. Shout out to Ghostly Destiny. A little ominous, right? Okay, first and foremost, you have to remember, Lightroom is a non-destructive application. That means you can make an edit, you can make another edit, and another edit, you can export, you can come back later, and your original edit's still gonna be there. So let's just whew, exhale and take the pressure off, and let's have some fun. All right, so first and foremost, you know Lightroom has like really awesome presets? Here's a photo I took a couple years ago during this project about immigrants in America called Nation of Newcomers. If you go over to the presets, you can see there's all sorts of presets that are good for adaptive things, but let's just go over to the portrait ones and see, we can do some black and white stuff. I mean, we can go get some edgy portraits. So if you're just trying to get in a quick edit with color, you can stop right here, hit the brakes, just go over to presets and get working. And what's really cool is you can get over to the Learn tab in Lightroom. Let's just go in and own it up. And you can pull up a photo and download a preset that someone else made. So if you go over to Community, let's just do a quick thing. One second. You can save presets from all sorts of folks that look like the things that we're trying to have our images look like. Shout out to this one from Kevin. It looks a little sizzy. All right, so let's get back to our edit. So, going to the color tab, there are two main things I want to focus on today. They are our color mix and our color grade. So we go over and we're gonna see the color tab has a couple things in it. I'm gonna quickly define them. Temperature and tint are both things that are based on your white balance. As, as long as you're photographing in raw, it's not a huge deal. You can just use this eyedropper tool, identify what the white part of the image is, and then you can have your white balance be as close to accurate as possible. But we're not worried about that. What we're trying to do is we're trying to make mood. So the color mix tool is really interesting because what it does is it allows you to isolate and edit a single color or a spectrum of color. So you have your reds, oranges, yellows, greens, blues. Just for argument's sake, we're just gonna bring our saturation and our blue down, and you'll see this background goes from the base, deep blue, to a gray, or even up to here, which is an even deeper blue. You can also change your hue, which is where the color is on the uh, color wheel. So obviously, the closer you get to purple, the more red you add, the more purple that blue gets. And the closer you get to green, the more yellow is being injected. Think about it kind of similarly to how you are here in the color wheel. As you move from blue, you get closer to purple, which is closer to red, moving closer to green, which is closer to yellow. So, you can also change the luminance, which is how bright or dark that blue is. Why do you, why do you care about this? Let's say you think these reds are a little overpowering, you wanna bring the saturation down just a little bit. You wanna be careful because one thing that color mix does really well, something that I find really interesting is our skin tones really have a lot of red and orange in them. So as we slide those sliders, let's be very careful not to accidentally make our subjects look a little lifeless. So how can you use color mix in a way that adds to mood? So we saw what we did with the blue. So let's go ahead and make our blue a little bit deeper and a little darker. That way we have a solid background that we can really place our subject on. Now let's go down to our color grade. Color grade's a little different. Color mix isolates a color. Color grade allows you to add color cast and mood to our highlights, our midtones, and our shadows. So quick definition, highlights are the brightest parts of the image. If you look over to my right, you can see the highlights right here. 
uh, in the set that I'm filming on. If you look over to my left, you can see shadows, which are our darker parts of the image, and our midtones are everything else. That's me. So, I'm now gonna just slide over, and I don't wanna overpower her, so I'm actually not gonna do anything with her midtones right now. But, let's just add a little bit of orange to the highlights. And you wanna be careful, because as you're starting to do this, you'll realize how it's altering skin tones, adding a little bit of blue to our shadows. And now we have an image that, I like this edit because it almost feels a little American flaggy. It feels a little bit older, almost a little more vintage. One thing I do need to do is bring my highlights down a little bit. And bring my exposure up a little bit. But if we look at our before and after, we have an image that has a specific look. It almost feels like a passport photo. The way these images were used is I used them on a website with my friends, um, Natalie and Jose, and we made this website that was all about all the people that have immigrated to America. But this image to me has mood, it has color, and it's not just kind of a boring base. So using the color mix tool, I made the background a little bit darker, a little bit flatter, and that allowed me to then add in some color and some mood in the image with color grade. Let's look at a few more examples. This has a huge shadow, so let's take a quick look at what this might look like. We're just gonna use a little bit of shadow in the color grade and see where we're at. Got to be careful, that green's a little aggressive, we're going to roll around. And one thing you're noticing now that we're just focusing on shadows is as you move around, you start to rotate, you see the H is changing, that H stands for hue. It's the same hue we're looking up here in the color mix. Other thing is, as we get closer to the edge of the circle, you're seeing that the S, being the saturation, is getting darker. Now, if you want to change the luminance, you can simply slide it either direction, which is how bright or dark it is we just want to add a little bit of color and we can even grab the edge and rotate while keeping our saturation, which is pretty cool. Now basically I'm using their skin tone as a guide here. Just to give you a quick little <laughs> jump into distortion. I'm just going to get this edit a little closer to what I want. And now we are from here to here. It feels a little bit more intense, a little more passionate summary, and we have this vibe that you can pick up on their hands, that the sun is still rising in the sky. Let's do one more example. Color, baby, color. How can we work with it? Here's a photo I took of my friend Janelle a couple years ago. I just want to show you really quick why color mix is interesting, but also can be dangerous. Often if we're not paying attention, we'll go, oh, I want to make this color a little different but we're not paying attention to how, since it's orange, what it's doing to her skin. Look at how, as we start to change our luminance, how much darker, brighter it's making her skin. We have to be very careful when we do these things, and if it comes down to this, if you need to, you can always use the masking tool, select our subject, invert my selection, and then I can work right here in my image to change my color, I want to use the saturation or anything without altering her skin tone. Once again, Lightroom is a really powerful application. So we know that color mix can be something dangerous we're not paying attention to skin tone. So let's put this all together now, our color mix, our color grade. Let's put some mood onto an image. Now, which one should we pick? Huh, I wonder if I have one already ready for you. I do. Here's a picture of my friend Jasmine I love. She was assisting me on the shoot and I turned around and took this photo of her and I think it's amazing. I already had a little bit going, but I'm gonna turn my, turn my color grades off. We're gonna redo this to add a little bit of oomph. So first we're gonna add a little bit of warmth to these shadows. It's a wintry day. It's a little flat. Then I'm just gonna bring my contrast up just a little more. Then I know my highlights. My poor highlights, they've been begging for some attention, so I'm going to add just a little bit of blue there. A little bit more there in my midtones, and I would say maybe this blue is a little too strong, I can tell because I'm starting to make 
make these, this <laughs> bouquet tree look a little too aggressive. And then I'm just gonna kind of rotate a little bit more, give myself a little bit more orange so it's good with her skin tone. Come up, bring my whites down so this building isn't as bright. And now we have a before and an after that just feels different. I think adding warmth in with her skin gives this image a certain energy that I really love. Um, something else I might do is I might make my shadows a little bit darker so I can give her just a little bit more contrast. Adding and changing the mood is something that I love to do in Lightroom. Like, I think it's the thing that makes it the most special. Being able to take an image and give it different life. Life like this, or even this. As you move around the city, right? Even looking at this image, Notice that I added just a little bit of warmth to my shadows and my highlights and my midtones so that the image itself just has a little pop to it. Even as I slide my saturation, you're seeing just a little bit more mood and energy in the image that you wouldn't otherwise have. Let's look at our before, look at our after. We have a very summery image that maybe is a little too red. Let's bring that back down a little bit by changing our saturation. We have an image that we feel really good about. I mean, come on. You can print that out and show it to your mom. Color tools are what set you apart as an image maker. They allow you to put any image that you captured on a canvas that only you can make, to make them warmer, to make them cooler, to make them more dramatic, to make them flatter. You know your vision, and so being able to create something from scratch by first observing it, photographing it, editing it, and delivering it is a true example of your artistry. I hope you found this video really helpful, and if you have any questions, please comment them below. But please, please, please never forget how powerful Lightroom is and how powerful you are for being able to wield it as well as you do. Until next time.